Okay, guys, no jokes today. <laughs> I think you'll I think you'll understand why here in a second. Also, I'm just kind of pissed off, so let's just get into this. So I think you can tell by the headline of this video, and it's kind of a serious video for a lot of reasons. I'm a full-blown caffeine addict since the age of, I think around 18 when I was in the military. The first thing I would do when I was in the military is I would wake up, um, and before I would drive to the fire department, I used to be a firefighter in the military, I would go to the gas station and I got in the habit of drinking an energy drink every single morning. And also I got in the habit of taking a no explode. I think I actually started that in high school before I would work out. And I also got severely in the habit of always before working, drinking some caffeine of some kind. And so in order to wake up, in order to work out, in order to work in general, that's what I would usually do at the fire department. I'd finish my work day and then I'd start working on my internet business. Everything was completely tied to caffeine. Once it got to a certain point, I'm sure you might be in the scenario right now. Um, it, it got to the point where it's not an option to quit. You, you, don't, you don't get to quit caffeine. It, it just doesn't work. If you stop taking it, especially when you have it connected to all the things that are important to you, me particularly work, not taking it is like getting rid of all the things you really enjoy. And so recently I completely cold turkey stopped coffee. I don't drink it ever anymore. I'm not gonna drink it ever again, except maybe like as an after dinner drink when I go to dinner. I will never drink it for work. I will never drink it to work out. I will never use it as a stimulant for work ever again. And I wanna talk about why in this video, because I feel that it really took a huge bite out of my life. It really hurt my health. Um, it actually made me far less productive. Caffeine does not make you more productive. When you first start taking it, maybe the first week, yes. After that, no, it does not. And I'll talk about why. And I wanna talk about why I put off quitting caffeine for so long, because you might be in the same situation. And while I don't care if you quit caffeine or not, on this channel a lot, I've talked about dopamine detoxes. I've talked about using things like no fap or hard mode and all sorts of ways to make your mind way more effective and make you way more effective. And I think one of the greatest things you can do is to stop drinking caffeine in any shape or form or putting it in your body in any way. And I've put off getting off of it for the longest time because I really didn't have the information. I didn't understand um, how it really affects the brain, the marketing behind it and all the BS um, it's disgusting. And about a week, two weeks ago, I just said, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm not doing this anymore. And I just cold turkey stopped. And it was really hard. Um, I'm about 10 days into it right now. And I want to also go into the results as well. So, And so in this video, I want to explain why I quit and why I put it off for so long, how caffeine actually works and how it truly works. Most of the stuff, most of the research around caffeine is complete BS. It's, it's right up there with smoking in terms of the amount of BS involves, uh, the amount of BS that's involved with this chemical. And then finally, kind of my results so far, which are not, they're exactly what you expect. It sucks, but I'm at the point right now where I'm starting to see the benefit. And I also wanna to talk to you about how quitting cold turkey, how I manage that, uh, cause it was very difficult for me to do. So let's just begin. It's gonna take me a few minutes to wrap this up. So again, if you don't have five minutes to learn how this works and you're drinking caffeine right now, I guarantee you are lowering your productivity so much. You're cutting years off your life. You're cutting your overall performance and thinking ability down. And you're just messing with so many systems in your body to allow you to be effective. And if the only thing you're looking at is your outputs, caffeine is literally holding your maximum output hostage. It's, it's lowering you and the only way you can get back to 70%, 80% of your capabilities is by drinking caffeine. So trust me, you're going to lose a lot more than the five minutes it takes me to explain this off your work productivity and everything you care about if you don't take a few seconds just to watch this. So let me just begin because um, you probably relate to the situation that I was in. So basically in the past, I've been at the point where I drink or I've drank caffeine nonstop. And it got to the point where I was actually having panic attacks way back in the day. I've learned how to manage the caffeine consumption and whatnot a lot more since then. But even at that point, I wouldn't get off of it. And the reason why I would never get off caffeine is because it was directly connected to work. I literally could not sit down. And even up until a few weeks ago when I quit caffeine, I could not sit down and start work unless I had coffee. So if it's like 12 in the afternoon, if I wanna go and get to work, first thing I'm gonna have to do is, is go to my fridge, get some coffee or walk down the street and get some coffee or some form of caffeine. And I used to drink a lot more, but I'm probably at a, or I was probably at about 500 milligrams a day lately, probably a lot more in the past, which isn't like excessive. That's, that's considered healthy. And I'll explain why it's not healthy here in a second. It, saying it's healthy is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. 
It's not healthy. It's not good for you. It doesn't help you be productive. And I'll talk about that here in a second. But I've been wanting to get off caffeine for a long time because... I noted that messes up with a lot of messes up a lot of my health and also messes up my stomach. Uh, it messes up sleep. But I always justify it like, "Hey, look, the production increase you get, it's worth it. Uh, this is not that bad for you long term. It's not really affecting you. Uh, it's not affecting your mood or anything like that. It's it's overall something that's pretty healthy." And so I could justify it for a long time. And whenever I go and try to take a few days off coffee or something I'm like this, just, this just isn't worth it. I'll just keep doing this because again, coffee's healthy. It's okay for you. It's, it's not that bad. What motivated me to quit caffeine and what made me quit was learning the truth about how caffeine works and really how the whole entire caffeine industry works as a whole. So first up, how does caffeine actually work? How does it actually work? Basically what it does, and I'm not gonna explain the whole scientific stuff behind it, because frankly, I'm not good at explaining scientific stuff. Every time I do on this channel, it becomes pretty apparent that uh, I'm not nearly as woke and smart as I, I try to portray to you guys. So let's keep that charade going. But here's how it works. You basically have receptors in your brain that when your brain gets heavily active or you start to get tired, a uh, certain chemical goes into those receptors and it starts making you tired. So what caffeine does is it blocks those receptors. So it stops you from getting tired. Basically, the, the chemicals are going to go in your brain and say, hey, it's time to slow down. It's time to, you know, rest. It's going to block those. So it's going to make you very alert. And so basically what caffeine does is it basically blocks your body from telling your body what exactly it needs. It, what your body is feeling, the worn downness, the fatigue, the want to sleep, that's still there. All the negative effects that come with it are still there. Caffeine just blocks it. And then what caffeine also does is it goes and fills the receptors, uh, the other receptors in your body and triggers cortisol and dopamine. So what cortisol is, it's the fight and flight mechanism. It basically triggers all the increased heart rate, uh, the increased alertness, and basically what you would feel if you saw like a tiger or something in the jungle and you're a caveman. And it also triggers dopamine, which is the thing that makes you happy and feel like you're moving in a good direction. All this is completely artificial. And when you total this all together, it's so nasty because the first few times you do caffeine, or maybe if you're doing it like once a month, once a week or something like that, not too bad. But over time, if you drink it daily like everybody else does and like I did, this is so damn nasty. Because first off, in your brain, the thing that's telling you to rest, what happens when those receptors are constantly blocked, your brain makes more of them. And then what happens is caffeine can't fill all those, so you have to drink more caffeine to fill them. But then what happens is it's like a credit card. You're building up all this debt of all these sleepy chemicals in your brain, and so the second you stop drinking caffeine, what happens? They flood all those receptors and you crash. You crash. And if you stop drinking caffeine for a few days, your body completely gets overwhelmed because it's overwhelmed with all those things. And your brain isn't designed to work with these sleepy chemicals anymore. And so you're just done. And you're literally addicted. Caffeine does not make you more alert. It does not make you a better worker. What it does is it prevents your body from having to deal with the debt that you've occurred. And so what happens is your energy and who you are is being held hostage by the caffeine. <clears throat> caffeine reduces you to 50% of who you are. And in order to get to 80% to the point where you can actually feel decent, you have to drink caffeine. That's part one. Part two, it floods your body with cortisol. Cortisol has a negative effect on literally everything if it's constantly in your body. And it's so commonly known that stress is bad for your body. That's just undebatable. Stress is bad for every single part of your body. Aging, digestion, sleep, all the key things that are important to you, feeling good and looking good and staying good and thinking clearly, it messes up all of them. And then finally, dopamine that we've talked about on the channel, I'm not going to get into how dopamine works. You can go check out the channels around the channel. We all know that the more dopamine your brain gets, it gets overwhelmed and stops being able to enjoy other things. And so also, what does caffeine do to you? It makes you not able to enjoy other things as much as you possibly could. That's why you're going to notice a lot of people that drink caffeine all the time, like me, for example. It gives you social anxiety even when you're not on caffeine. It makes a lot of things that you would enjoy not enjoyable because your brain cannot enjoy work. It cannot enjoy things without caffeine in it. A lot of people can't work out. They can't work. They can't do something creative or fun unless they get that, that nice cup of joe in. It gets even worse when you actually start looking at, well, a lot of people that drink a lot of caffeine have anxiety all the time around people because their, their stress hormones are overblown. Their adrenals are completely worn out. And so look at all that. It, tell, it holds your energy hostage, it messes up every other part of your body, and what it's going to do is it's going to make it so you can't get the enjoyment out of life and the enjoyment out of things unless you have caffeine going through your body. I felt all three of these things. And just to put this in perspective, you have your energy 
you have your motivation and you have your overall health, which again affects both of these greatly, your sleep, your digestion, especially. So what happens when you drink caffeine? You already had all this stuff to begin with. What caffeine does is it gives you an overwhelming high the first time you drink it. It makes you feel more productive because you're flooded with dopamine. That's the same thing cocaine does. It makes you feel like you're more productive and more energetic because you have cortisol flooding your body. You have a fight and flight hormone. At the same time, you have massive dopamine. What dopamine is, it's a chemical that motivates you. But you already were able to generate these things on your own, just not in an extreme drug-related high that caffeine gives you the first time you drink it. But after the first few times, your brain starts working very, very differently. It makes more receptors because those receptors are being plugged by caffeine. And so what then happens is you're not getting any boost. You don't even get the high anymore. And what happens is your energy gets blocked off. This is caffeine. It's the barrier right here. And it blocks you from your energy and it blocks you from motivation because you can't have any energy without caffeine now because you don't, the receptors cannot be plugged. You can't have motivation without dopamine because those receptors are again, not plugged. And then your health and everything starts to decrease, increasing your need for caffeine. For example, your adrenals get overwhelmed. This causes you anxiety when you're not even on caffeine and causes your sleep patterns to be a mess and causes you to get bad sleep. So then you need more caffeine. And so what then happens, even if you cut your health out of this, you start needing more caffeine and you have to have caffeine to get back to your normal. You have to get, have more caffeine to get to your normal and your brain keeps making more and more receptors because it thinks something's wrong. It says, oh God, I need to be getting these chemicals. They're not coming in. It makes more receptors. So you have to plug more and more holes of it to deal with all the chemicals that are building up. It would cause you sleepiness because if, if 10 of the receptors are filled, your brain's going to make, well, 15 of them. It's going to say, okay, we need to get some of that. And you're going to start feeling drowsy and worse. And your brain, and you're going to go, oh no, I need more caffeine. So you plug those 15, then your brain makes 20, then it makes 25, then it makes 30. And then a year later, you have 50 of them. And when you get off caffeine, you have 50 of these things that are just completely left wide open and you're hammered. But then what happens? Your adrenals and everything gets overwhelmed. Your digestion goes to crap. So you can't focus. You can't think. You can't be healthy. Proper digestion is the number one thing that's related to your mood and overall well-being. You can't sleep well because you have your adrenals completely overwhelmed because you are drinking so much caffeine now that your cortisol levels have completely gone through the roof and they're not going down anytime soon and you're not going to be able to sleep well. So then you need more caffeine. You need more caffeine because you're sleepy all the time. You need more caffeine to focus because your digestion is just a complete mess and you're having all sorts of bad problems going on right there. And then you can't get to the same levels of energy anyways and you can't feel motivated. And then the second you stop taking caffeine, boom energy crashes, motivation crashes. You are completely cut off from these things because you have all these chemicals flooding your body and caffeine works as the shield that was preventing you from the collapse that it created in the first place. And if you want to regain your health, you want to regain your energy, you want to regain your motivation, the only way you can do it is by going through hell. And caffeine companies know this. This is why it's one of the most, it is the most, one of the most profitable things on planet earth. It is the best product ever because you can't escape from it once you start drinking it unless you go through hell. And most people think it's healthy. Most people think it's good for them. I'll talk about that in here in a second. And that's what keeps people from going through the hell. Ah, it's not worth it. There is no way in fucking hell you can tell me that's acceptable. There's no way. It's complete bull. And the reason why there are so many articles online, there's so many things saying caffeine's healthy. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. You can drink it. It's the same exact thing that the cigarette companies did. If you go read a book called Caffeine Blues, it goes into all the research and it's biased as hell. Remember what happened, or if you don't remember what happened, when cigarette companies started getting in a lot of trouble, they started seeing that cigarettes were killing people. They tried to cover up all of it. And then when they originally released cigarettes, they had doctors promoting it. They were saying it was healthy. And the only reason the jig got caught up is because people started dropping dead of cancer. And for decades and decades and decades, cigarette companies completely covered this up. They paid so many studies to give them biased results. They produce so many studies based on companies they would own. They would get companies, they would set up research companies that they owned, and then they would do false studies of their own or biased cherry pick studies. And why would they do this? Because addictive substances are the number one most profitable thing you can sell, especially if they're cheap. If you can get a product that's cheap to produce, habit forming and addictive, where the person feels pain if they don't have it, and you can get them to use it every single day, you have the biggest cash cow ever. A cigarette costs nothing to produce. Now, cigarettes got busted. They got caught. And so there has to be labels and all sorts of warnings on it. The thing is, if you look at the biggest companies in the world, the most profitable companies in the world, they're drink companies. It's all drink companies. And they're all selling 
very cheap to produce products where if you don't drink them daily, you feel mass amounts of pain. And if you look at how these things are marketed, what happens? When did you start having your first caffeine? Probably when you were a kid through a Coke or some, some Sweden thing. And if you look at how these things are marketed, it's no different than cigarettes. The studies behind caffeine are all cherry picked. You're not going to hear any of them talk about the stuff that I just talked about. There is no way that if you put something in your body that stops you from dealing with fatigue, overloads your entire body with stress and it overloads your brain with dopamine, it's good for you. There's no way it's good for you. No, it's not. There's, there's no debate. There was absolutely no debate. That all being said, when you look at all the research behind caffeine, it's all cherry picked to cover that up and produce a bunch of things that like, oh yeah, it's going to help you. Uh, it's going to lower your chance of prostate cancer by one to 2%. They put out stuff like that. They cherry pick little things to encourage people who say, man, maybe this caffeine isn't affecting me so well. They go look it up and go, oh no, caffeine, it's okay for you. Drink three cups of coffee a day. It's healthy. It's healthy. Antioxidants. It's nonsense. Not saying those healthy things are not there but they're completely outweighed by the negative things. I'm sure if you look at nicotine, there's a few positive benefits, but when it connects you and addicts you to smoking something uh, that gives you lung cancer, it, it really doesn't matter if it gives you a small 5% creativity boost or uh, gives you a little bit of antioxidants in your body. Everything has some health effects if you look at it in a vacuum. And this is completely covered up by drink companies. It's completely covered up by drink companies. Why? Because they have a product that's cheap to produce. And if you don't drink it every single day, it ruins all the things that are important to you, like work, working out, feeling good. You can't feel good without this drug. You can't feel good without this drug that overloads your body with stress and makes it so you can't sleep. And I've gone in all the negative things already. And then how do they market this? It's the nastiest, silliest thing that cigarettes literally try to do with their vape pens. They go and put caffeine in all sorts of things that kids eat little soft drinks, candy. And so what happens by the time you're 14, 15, you're a full blown caffeine addict. Suddenly you start picking up energy drinks. Suddenly you start picking up coffee. And next thing you know, you have this habit that you're going to be going and spending money on for the rest of your life. It's the best business model ever. And one of the reasons why I said I'm pissed at the beginning of this video is when I first got into caffeine, there's no warning labels on things. There are no things saying, hey, this is going to mess up all these other aspects of your life. This is super duper addictive. Everybody knows these things. And I'm not saying like, well, this is someone else's fault. What I'm saying is that this marketing scam, I, I basically fell hook, line and sinker into it. And for the longest time, it's been messing up my body. It's been messing up my health. And I've resisted getting off of it because I didn't have all this information and because of all the false information online and because I got hooked at a very young age. And so once I figured out all this stuff, I just said, my sleep isn't so great. I'm having to do all these things to fix my sleep. My digestion's not great. I'm constantly feeling sick after I eat things and every, all sorts of other things that come with having bad digestion. Uh, I constantly feel fatigued. I can't find joy if I don't have all the things that come with it. And I looked at all the things behind it. I just go, man, I've been duped and this really pisses me off. And so I decide, hey, I'm done with caffeine forever. Okay, I'm never going to use it as a work stimulant or a motivation stimulant ever again. Just maybe like as an after dinner drink or something you can get with friends, but never ever is something I use daily once every two weeks max, but I'm not having any for the next couple months. The reason why I've been putting, getting off of it is I've known this stuff for a while is because I can't work without it. I literally had to take the last seven to eight days off of work just because I can't function. I wake up and I have no motivation. I don't feel good. I feel like crap. My body feels disgusting. It's literally an addiction. I'm being held hostage to this thing. The reason why I had to drink caffeine every single morning was not to get motivated, was not to have energy. It was because my body was so destroyed and so fatigued and so worn out and so being overwhelmed with sleepy chemicals and so dependent on coffee that I can't even get the energy and motivation I should rightfully have without caffeine because it slipped into my body and now it's just created an addiction. All I'm doing is trying to cover up the addiction by drinking more coffee. If you look at people like Tony Robbins, if you look at kids, they have tons of energy, but they don't drink caffeine. Why? Because your body's able to give yourself tons of energy and motivation without caffeine. And for the longest time, I would think when I'm looking at caffeine, oh, I need this to be motivated. This is part of who I am. This is just something that I drink to feel good. Um, and it makes me a better worker. And, I, and, and my secret to success is caffeine. No, it's not. You have enough energy and motivation on your own to be successful or do whatever you want. What has happened is caffeine has gone into your life and held hostage your energy and motivation. And there's nothing more apparent than that than me going from being super productive and super motivated to stopping caffeine and being like, I can't even function. Got headaches, lethargic, don't even care about my business for a while. And I knew that would happen. I knew that would happen. That's why I said um, I, I take a seven day quarterly break. And that's why I set this quarterly break to just say, I'm getting off of it. I'm done. And so what are my results so far? I'm telling you so far, it sucks. 
the first week awful. The first week just terrible. Didn't get anything done. It's so depressing seeing all the things you care about being held hostage because uh, you can't drink caffeine. At this point right now, I don't have as much energy in the morning, but my brain is starting to work again. I feel pretty clear. It's still pretty hard to get work done, but I have a much more consistent energy flow. And I'll keep you guys updated on this, but at this point in time, I don't feel that same high. I don't feel like outrageous, let's go nuts thing, but I'm also able to focus a lot better. I can think a lot clearer. I can focus on one thing for a longer period of time. I'm much calmer around people. I'm much calmer in general. My sleep is better. My digestion is better. I can feel happy without drinking caffeine. I can, I can basically like three o'clock rolls around and I still have like the same consistent energy. And more so throughout the day, while I don't have a huge giant burst of motivation in the morning, I can just go the entire day with the same level of motivation. It's not all over the place because my brain uh, isn't is reliant on caffeine to plug all the receptors to prevent my counter chemicals from coming into my brain. Am I back at 100%? No, not at all. And that's like what sucks. It's probably gonna be 30 days to, to two months before I am. But um, I just wanted to share this with you because I know a lot of you guys who watch this channel, you wanna work in the best possible way. You wanna be the most focused. You wanna be the best version of yourself. And I don't see how you can do that while being addicted to caffeine. I've already said enough times, so I'm not gonna repeat myself anymore because I have a habit of doing that in videos, but you're destroying literally every important aspect of your health and well being, your sleep, your mental well being, your digestion, your actual ability to feel happiness, the chemicals that inflect your motivation, it's all just being held hostage by this chemical. So I wanted to share this with you. I want to maybe motivate you to quit. I don't care if you quit, but if you've been thinking about it for a while, I think, I think you should really share with you like the dramatic links I had to go to. I just, just say I'm not working for seven days. Like I was literally like I was sick. It's literally like I was sick getting off this. And this is one of the first times in almost a decade where like I have no urge to drink coffee or caffeine right now. And that's really cool in its own part. And while I'm not super gung ho, like let's make jokes and, and uh, happy go lucky right now, I'm actually pretty pissed off uh, and short fused at the moment. But I have the energy and focus that I need to get work done again. And that's really cool. And it's not all over the place. And it's really nice to feel uh, not completely recovered, but free from this crap. So that's it, guys. If you if you like videos like this, go check out my other videos after this as well that cover dopamine detox. That's super important as well for this. If you don't understand how dopamine works in your brain, it's going to be very hard to motivate yourself to do anything uh, at all. And that's it. I'll see you next time I see you. <laughs>